No clue why we took the long way round. Would have been quicker to go through the woods. Much obliged. Very kind of you. Knights Young? What say you we play some cards? No, not to... Oh, Gwent? We've got to have a tail. It's tradition now. Ah, fine. So be it. Here's a story Geralt told me only after much prodding. It happened in these very woods, not far from Aldersburg. The Witcher was traversing the wood with his ever-loyal, occasionally blundering, companion in many adventures, the Bard Dandelion. Road-weary, the two decided to pitch camp and brew up a soup. Geralt collected water for the kettle, while Dandelion wandered off in search of milk caps, chanterelles and porcinis, without which their thin brew promised to offer very little flavour indeed. Suddenly, the troubadour heard a low, drawn-out rumble. For an instant, he thought his empty belly was to blame. Yet the mysterious groan was quickly supplanted by a terrifying, piercing shriek. Dandelion's nerves were ruffled, to be sure. Yet his curiosity was piqued even more. So he set off in the sound's direction. A decision he would soon come to regret. Amidst the trees, a wooden bridge came into view. At one end, a group of travelers. At the other, a monstrous horde. Ah! Help! Save us! I beg you! Why do I always find myself... Oh, hold on! I'll get help! Dandelion pivoted on the spot, then froze in place. Ah! Geralt! Geralt! Use that witcher hearing of yours, damn it! They'll devour us! Eat us alive! Run while you're able, and your legs will carry you! No, no, stop! You'll never escape them! They're too fast! And just who the ruddy hell are you? Some bloody expert on monsters? I've learned a thing or two. Second hand. We can't let on that we're afraid. Come on, everyone! Forward! Attack! Bad should have stayed in two, sir. Make way! I'm coming! And they say bards lack courage. A rotten rumor I've dispelled on countless occasions. Ah! Another one, help! Somebody help me! My little A, good and holy mother, have mercy on us! Excellent! Now hold your position! There! In the underbrush! Another! Ha! One look at us and it hides, tail between its legs. This beast has some sense. We've got them outnumbered. We can do this. Slash, strike, kill. And so, with some remarkable aid from Dandelion, the hapless travelers escaped with their lives. Yet their victory proved as unexpected as it was fleeting. 
Hear that? That frightened beast. It's returned. And it's not alone. Well, no sense delaying the inevitable. Shall not leave you behind. Yeah. Right away! Three against three. We can manage with odds like that. Then again, perhaps not. This is the end. Goodbye, cruel world. Curtain! Resigned to his fate, Dandelion slumped to his knees to await the final, fatal blow. And yet, it did not come. For the monsters retreated as if stricken by a sudden terror. Dandelion spun round to identify the source of their fear, spotted his savior, and bellowed, Geralt, finally! You even realize how long you kept me waiting? Nowhere near as long as I've waited to hear you say thank you. Saved your skin how many times now? What would you say? Now step back and sheathe that blade before you hurt yourself. I beg your pardon? Before you deign to show up, I actually killed one of these beasts myself! Mm -hmm. No witnesses, I take it? Damn it. Move it, folks! You strike from the left. You from the right, while I... while I'm still needed here. <sighs> At last! Victory is within re- ah! Oh, another one! Help! Somebody help me! Curse you. Die, you scoundrel! You rogue! <sighs> another monster! Another beast! We are victors! Do you see that? My selfless final assault turned the tide! The travelers, not in want of coin, rewarded their saviors generously, then offered yet more in exchange for another small favor. In their panicked flight from the monster swarm, they had abandoned a wagon heavy with valuables. They wished now to recover it and make haste out of the Moulderwood, with the Witcher as their armed escort, of course. Geralt was, at first, inclined to refuse. Yet Dandelion, upon hearing the promised sum, swiftly persuaded his friend to accept the contract. The Witcher would prove he was well worth the coin soon enough.
the wagon stood abandoned and turned upon its side at the road's edge, right next to a monster nest. Damn it, no telling what's in there. Need to be careful. Whatever your orders, Master Witcher. We trust you. This is proving easy. Too easy. Stop. Everyone stay back. It could be a trap. <laughs> We've done it! We've won! Easy now. Too early to celebrate. Keep your wits, dammit. This isn't over. surface soon. Geralt's intuition once again proved true. From the depths of the nest emerged a wave of monstrosities, covered in mud and congealed blood, their eyes burning with hatred. Awaiting your orders! With Geralt leading and guiding their efforts, the travelers defeated the wretched horde and recovered their wagon of valuables. The caravan then resumed its journey, turning north towards Aldersburg. The forest's edge was not far. With a favorable wind at their back, they would arrive at the city gates before nightfall. But rarely does a favorable wind blow through the Moulderwood. wood. 
As our heroes and their companions rode through a village that lay in ruin, a man in a tattered uniform emerged to meet them. In the name of King Damavid, I command you to stop. A toll is owed. You must pay it here, you must. In a ravaged, deserted village in the middle of the woods? Interesting place you've chosen for a toll, collector. Your authority. You know, the writ that grants you the right to collect. I wager it's just as interesting. And I'd very much like to see it. Well, a pair of slippery snakes you are, ain't you? I wonder if you'll keep laughing once my flares knocked all your teeth out your mouth. Get em, lads! And the last one. <laughs> Sorcery. Real bloody magic. Don't shit yourself silly at the first sign of luck. This ain't over just yet. Geralt, look out! Uh, take that, you freak! <laughs> no! Master Witcher, do you require aid? No, I'll manage. That ought to do it. Be gone, you devils! Dandelion, need to see to my wounds. You're in charge. But I... Figure it out. What doesn't kill you? Two arms, men! Uh, aye. Right away. Curse you, traitors. Oh, this don't look good. This don't look good at all. With life, mates! For love and honor! Not at all. Not so tough without your witcher, are you? Actually, we are extremely tough. Dangerously so. Deadly, in fact. So much so, we're giving you a leg up. I have a bad feeling about this. Master Dandelion, they've got the upper hand. We cannot survive this. They'll slaughter us all, to the last man. Calm yourselves, men. I've an ace up my sleeve. was that? A dwarven battle song. Nothing quite like it to stir a fire in your heart. Now, add them! Victory! Sweet, sweet victory!
the travelers had managed to fend off the bandit deserters. Alas, this did not at all mean they had left danger behind. The unexpected skirmish had delayed them. It was clear they would not leave the wood before dusk, and the Moldwood, hazardous by day, turned utterly deadly by night. The travelers required a safe location in which to pitch camp post-haste. And here, fortune shone down upon them as they... Yet the travelers soon also discovered they were not alone in choosing the ivy-covered stone structures as their shelter. Verla! Who approaches? Merchant caravan. We mean no harm. Oh, you think me so gullible, Dwan, to believe these words you proffer so easily. You humans hunt us like animals. Half our unit lost just two days past. It wasn't us, I assure you. We had nothing to do with... Gods, what was that? Erica's queen. Must have followed our trail. We destroyed her nest. She's out for revenge. Oh, typical. You disturb nature's balance in the forest and now stand bewildered as it seeks to restore it. Seems we can't count on their help. Close ranks, now! This is it. We'll die in this accursed wood. Hey, Long Ears! Once this beast finishes with us, you know you'll be next, right? He speaks true, Sorka. Bladder ass. So be it. Attack! Forced by circumstance to do so, eternal foes stood shoulder to shoulder against the monster horde. Indeed, it was truly a rare sight. Humans and Squirtel fighting side by side amid elven ruins. Geralt, can you imagine the ballads? Uh, can you hear them? Won't be no ballad if you're dead. Focus, damn it.
You'll regret your mum ever squirted you out. It's wounded on its last legs! Valoi, attack before it scurries into the wood! We will see who is weak. The Arrakis Queen staggered, shrieked, and emitted a blood-curdling howl before collapsing onto the wagon and smashing it to bits. A groan rose from beneath the splintered boards. Someone was there, trapped, but alive. An elf, badly bruised, his limbs bound with rope. The Scoia'tael recognized him at once as the leader of a lost guerrilla unit. The alleged merchants had captured him for transport to Aldersburg, where he would first face torture and then the hangman, while they collected a hefty reward. Rather obviously, the revelation of the wagon's occupant put an immediate end to the alliance forged just moments before. Our heroes found themselves between a rock and a hard place, left to examine their conscience and loyalties, and, in consequence, to choose a side.
swords I smile at, weapons laugh to scorn. Enough! Do something! Stop mucking about! Favorite cut a lamp? The shank. I shall not fail. Taste of your own medicine. As you wish, my lady. None shall tread on us. For the daisy of the valley! has shown us the way. Let us sing 
the Song of Steel! Looking to dance, mate? to help one or the other. Watch and learn. Sword and arm be one.
we will see who is weak. Swords I smile at, weapons laugh to score. Again and again. I shall not fail! For you to die, Duan. For the Daisy of the Valley. In the end, our heroes sided with the human bounty hunters in battle. Indeed, these supposed merchants had been revealed as devious frauds, yet their misdeeds paled in comparison to the atrocities the elven guerrillas committed as their way of life. Our heroes turned and strode away from the elven ruins, battle sounds still echoing behind them. Tears welled up in Dandelion's eyes, then spilled and trickled. Is this the way it would always be? Would humans and elves never live in harmony? Thereafter, the Witcher strove to avoid these woods, and did his damnness never to meddle in settling others' scores. What a tale. So something wicked dwells in these woods after all. Go on, tell us another. Hmm. So, perhaps the one about... Uh, 
Tales are nice and all, but it's time we moved on. Hmm. We really got to chain him? I got no choice in the matter. Stand up. Right. As you wish. <laughs>